All right, Naira, I got two o'clock Eastern. Is it okay if I go ahead and get this party started? Yeah, go ahead. All right, awesome. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning if you are on the West Coast. And if you're watching this uh, recording, I hope you're having a good day no matter where or when you are. We are here to talk about using WhatsApp to increase engagement with multicultural communities. Awesome. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Glad you're all here. Uh, I'm Steven. I'm over here at Boomerang, and I'll be uh, monitoring uh, today's little discussion, as always. And just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Just want to let you all know that we are recording this session, and we'll be sending out the slides as well as the recording uh, later on today. So if you have to leave early, or maybe you just want to review the content later on, don't worry, we will get all those good uh, resources in your hands later on today. But most importantly, uh, chat in. We'd love to hear from you throughout the hour or so. So ask questions, use that chat box. There's a Q&A box as well. Um, we'd love for these sessions to be interactive. In fact, we may call on you to, to, ask, to answer some questions of ours as well. So do that. We're gonna save some time again for Q&A. So we'd love to hear from you. Introduce yourself if you haven't already. You can send us a tweet. I'll keep an eye on Twitter as well. But uh, don't sit on those hands. Don't be shy. We'd love to hear from you. And if this is your first Bloomerang web webinar, uh, welcome. We do these webinars just about every Thursday throughout the year. We love doing them. It's one of the favorite things we do here at Bloomerang. But if you've never heard of Bloomerang beyond the webinars, we are also a provider uh, of donor management software. So check that out if you're interested. Maybe you're shopping for a new solution before the end of the year. You can go to our website. There's all kinds of goodies on there that you can check out. But don't do that right now because I have been so excited for this webinar for many, many months. I've, it's been circled on my webinar. Um, this is an awesome topic. And I'm so delighted to join from beautiful, yes, Barcelona, Spain. That's right, folks. Uh, Naira Bonilla is here. Naira, how's it going? You doing okay? It's a little hot awesome. there, but you're okay, right? All good here, yeah. And it's not too late. It's only like 8 p.m. So um, yeah, perfect. Uh, it's still daytime. Not, but a, a little weird. So thank you um, that that you're you know cutting into your evening to do this for us. Uh, I've gotten to know Naira over the last. We met June 2020. I think was the first time we started emailing each other. She's Amazing. awesome, folks. She's been blogging for us. Uh, she spends a lot of time doing workshops, helping orgs with communications. In fact, for you environmental folks listening. Um, special focus on environmental org. She's got a heart for that. Uh, so you might want to check in with her if maybe uh, if you fit that that cause type. Um, but like I said, you could you could listen to to her sharing wisdom on podcasts and, and webinars and events and, and fill you know hours of your day and it would be worth it. So I'm really happy that she's been so gracious to to carve this into her schedule because she's got a lot of really cool perspectives that honestly, us Americans, I know not all of you are Americans listening on, but we, we need to hear this stuff and, and we'll benefit from it. So thanks for being here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing, I'm gonna pipe down because I wanna, I wanna hear all you have to say about this. So let's see if we can get your slides going. Okay, yeah, I'll start sharing my slides. So can you all see my slides? Yeah, it looks like it's working. There we go. Yeah, cool. Take it away, my friend. Okay. okay, so hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with everyone. And um, so I'm going to talk today about using WhatsApp for connecting with diverse communities. And I'm going to give you six steps to do this. So uh, we'll break this uh, very, very complex topic. I'm like, there's so much to talk about this, but I'll break it down for you in six steps. So first, a little bit about me. So this is me in nature here on the right. So I got interested in communication topics because of my interest in nature, actually, because um, I like nature a lot. I like environmental causes. I like corals. I like the sea. And these are all very complicated topics sometimes. And so I started researching how ways in which communication can help us explain very complex topics in very simple ways. And this also led me to work with a lot of social projects because it, it happens a lot of times the same, right? There's a lot of very complicated concepts. There's a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of things going on. And it's important that we find ways to explain them 
so everyone can understand, right? So this is how I got interested in communication. So I'm a communication consultant, a communication strategist for nonprofits mainly. I work mainly with nonprofits and social enterprises that want to have a bigger impact, that want to increase their audiences and that want to interact with diverse communities. So people that speak multiple languages or that live in different countries that have different ways of communicating and of seeing the world. So I'm originally from Colombia. I've lived in the US for um, a while. Now I live here in Spain. I've lived in Egypt. I lived in various places. And this has also continued to spark my interest for communication, right? And I've noticed how different people communicate, how different people interact. And um, so I have more than five years of experience creating online and offline communities to support social and environmental causes, as Steven said. And um, I've worked a lot in Latin America. So using everything I've learned to spark action across Latin America and to create communities and inspire people to take action on social and environmental issues. So this is me. And so I'm gonna ask you some questions throughout the chat and uh, throughout the, this, uh, this talk. And I'm gonna ask you to write in the chat some of the answers. So this is my first question for you and is, do you want to reach more diverse communities? So type in the chat one, if this is your case and type in the chat two, if this is not your case. And I'll tell you how it goes. Lots of ones. Great, perfect. So it's working. So you'll see, I'll ask you more things during the talk. Perfect, I see someone said that they work in India. Great, yes. WhatsApp is huge in India. Okay, perfect, lots of ones. Great, we're all on the same page here. So, oh wait. First, so step one is find how your audience communicates. So in this case, it's WhatsApp because today we're gonna be talking about WhatsApp. And here are some impressive stats about WhatsApp. And WhatsApp has more than 2 billion users worldwide. It is the top messaging app in the world, but it's also considered a social media app. So it is grouped in the category of social media because people use it a lot. I'm gonna show you some, some stats in a minute. In the US, uh, there's expected to be 86 million users by 2023. Right now it's about 65 million users. And it is mainly used by the Latinx community in the US. So more than 50% of the Latinx community uses it. And there's more than 29 million messages sent on WhatsApp per minute. So this is massive. And why are Spanish speakers mostly using WhatsApp, it's because it's a way to connect to their families back home. So if you see in this map, WhatsApp is the top social messaging app in the world. So this is all the green is WhatsApp. So we have Canada, we have all of Latin America, we have Sub-Saharan Africa, Europe. So, and it far surpasses uh, the next one, which is Facebook Messenger. And um, WhatsApp is the favorite social media platform in the world. So it's WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, a close third, but it surpasses all the other ones. So people are using this, are using WhatsApp all the time for different purposes. And the idea is that as nonprofits, we can go where the people are. So people right now are on WhatsApp and we can use it uh, as a way to start a new channel of conversation with people that is complementary to how we already communicate with volunteers, with donors, with you know, our support base. So why do people love WhatsApp? So WhatsApp is available in multiple languages. So you can download the app in any language almost. It's encrypted, so that means that a third party cannot hack and read your messages. It's immediate, so if I send a message now to someone on the other side of the world, they will receive it immediately. It works in areas with slow internet, so this is really important in areas that, so for example, in Latin America, in certain parts of Asia, 
in sub-Saharan Africa that the internet is not as fast. So when you use WhatsApp, you send the message. What WhatsApp does is that it stores it. And then when you have even a little bit of connection, it sends it to the person. And the same for receiving messages. So it's a great tool for areas that have low internet connection. And another great thing about WhatsApp that not other messaging apps has is that you can share audios, so you can share voice notes, you can share files, and since, since a really long time ago, like now there's other apps that can do that, but um, in WhatsApp, this, this has been from a really long time. Audios, files, so you can share PDFs, you can share presentations, you can share pictures, you can share videos, links, you can share your location, and they all, they're all stored in your WhatsApp chat. So if you have uh, some sort of like institutional channel with people that you're communicating with, I don't know, your group at, uh, at your organization with your donors or something like this, you will have all like a record of all the things that you've sent them. And it's free with a phone plan. So in some areas of the world, if you send, a, if you send an SMS, it, it's, it's expensive. Like you need to pay for that. It's not free. Sometimes if you make a call, uh, you need to pay in some plans in some countries. But if you have the normal internet plan, you are going to get, um, you can just download the app and you can use it. So now I want to know from you. So type in the chat, yes, if you use WhatsApp and type no, if you don't use WhatsApp. Okay, some yeses, some noes. Not yet. Okay, it's almost equal. Some yes, some no. Someone said depends on the country I'm in. All the time, yes, but personally, yes, exactly. Yeah, good. So yeah, some people, most people use it now uh, only for, for personal communication, but it is changing with a lot of NGOs, a lot of nonprofits across the world, using it for a more professional purpose. And I'm going to show you how in some examples that you can use it. So the second step, now we have that first step done. The second step is talk to people in their language. So this is very important in communicating with diverse communities. First, don't assume what they know or how they communicate. So especially in digital communications, sometimes like it's happened to me before, for example, that I would assume that everyone um, sits down on a computer every day, right? Like I'm mostly sitting on a computer and I think like, oh, I'm gonna send an email. Some people are gonna see it quickly. But if I'm working with communities that have a more hands, you know, a job that they're like on their feet every day, they're not going to have the email. They're not going to be communicating through email. So don't assume how they're communicating and also don't assume what they know or what they don't know. Some stuff, some words, some uh, places, some cities that for some people can seem very obvious uh, for others are not. Like I was um, working with an organization the other day and we said like, oh, Stanford something about Stanford. And someone said like, oh, we don't need to put the country because it's obvious that's in the US. And I said, no, well, it's probably not obvious because we have a global audience. Maybe someone from Japan doesn't know where Stanford is, right? So, um, so always keep that in mind. Uh, culturally specific communication is the second thing. So always consider what are some aspects of the culture you're working with. So for example, is it a hierarchical culture? Is it a culture that you know respects elders a lot? Is it a culture that there are some taboos regarding some topics, for example, mental health, or or like different different topics? If there's taboos, you need to consider this. If it's um, you know a more formal uh, community or a more relaxed community where you know you can just come and joke and you know from the first day. So all these things are important when uh, we consider it and also in written communication. So sometimes we think written communications, you know, we get kind of a free pass from this, but no, it's really important in, with, some, with some cultures, you know, with, when you write an email, it has to be super formal, right? You have to be, hello, I hope this email is fine you where, dear, blah, blah, blah. And in some other, with some other people from other cultures, you can just say, hi, can you please send me this? And that's fine. The same happens with WhatsApp with all written communication. And another thing, make your communication accessible and inclusive. So having subtitles, having simple language, not using overcomplicated metaphors. So in English, for example, there's a lot of sports metaphors and sometimes they're very hard to understand for a person that 
I don't know, has never played baseball. You know, if you've never played baseball before, you don't know what third base, fourth base, you know, home run, you have no idea, right? So, so this is something important to consider. Have explanations if you're working with complicated topics um, that need to, you know, there's acronyms, you need to explain it. Always, you know, you can send, you can have like a little graph that explains it or have footnotes or always in this, in this case, it's always better to over communicate in a way and to make sure that the message is super clear. And you can use emojis and GIFs, of course, depending on the context, but this is also something that you can use in written communication in WhatsApp and to be able to connect with people in different ways. And the last thing is just be open to new ideas and cultures. And also something that's important is the notion of time, for example, is different in, in different cultures or the times when you're available. And this will happen if you have a WhatsApp channel with, with different, um, are you, you know, with different partners, donors, whatever, that sometimes for some people, it's okay to, to text you at 9 p.m. Like here in Spain, it's very common for people like in a, in a, in a professional context, or for example, if someone's going to come and fix something in my house, it's common that they text late, for example. It's fine because people like have dinner late, but in other countries, like I know in the U.S. or in Latin America, if someone texts you at 9 p.m., that's already almost bedtime. Like, that's not an appropriate time to be texting. But this, even these simple things, you will probably encounter them if you have this open channel of communication with, with your audiences. And I wanna show you a very, just a very quick, funny example I found. So this is how people laugh in texting in different languages. So in Spanish is with a J, so it would sound in English, ja, 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 but and in English, it's with an H, but the H in, in Spanish is silent. So that doesn't work. But, it, but in all languages, you know, you text, you laugh and text in different ways. So this is just a very simple example to show how important it is to, to know your audience and to be able to communicate with them in a way that they will understand. So I'm going to give you also a quick example. So this is me. This was me in the, no, don't type yet. Go back. Oh, you can't go back. Okay, don't type yet uh, in the chat. So uh, this is me in the Amazon. So I was working in the Amazon for a really long time. And, um, and so when I got there, I was coming, so coming sort of as an expert, but coming from the city. I hadn't lived in the Amazon before. So before I started interacting with this community, and it can be a community of any type. It can be a community of volunteers, of donors, of, you know, people that you want to engage, of parents, teachers, whatever. Uh, first, I started asking myself this question. So what does the community know? So in this case, I came to the city. I had a lot of, let's say, the technical knowledge, but I didn't, I didn't know the reality of these people. So the first thing was like, okay, what do they know? What can they teach me? The, the second thing is why should they listen to me? So in a, in, a, in a scenario where I'm not here to just impose my knowledge, but I'm here to, to, to show them, okay, this is some of the valuable things I can share with you and what are the ones that you can share with me? How can I respect their knowledge? So I was working with farming and like communities of farmers and indigenous communities. And we were talking a lot about sustainability, about how to protect the rainforest. And then there's the you know, the hard scientific side and the scientists say like, oh, this is the best way to protect the Amazon. But then these communities were saying something a bit different. So it's like, okay, how can I respect what they're saying? And we can still like get on the same page. And the last thing, which is super important is how can I include their voices? And I'll give you a bit more of an example of this. You know, how can they share, they share what they know and WhatsApp is a great way for this because people can send your voice note, people can send your picture immediately and then you can have this dialogue with people. So now my action for this, type one, if you have asked these questions at some point, or type two, if you're going to start. 1.5, I love it. Yeah, one, two, two, one, one, another 1.5, okay, perfect. A lot of ones. Okay, great. I'm really glad that you have been asking yourself these questions. This is really important. Okay, perfect. So next, this is, so the main part, the step three, after you have all this, you know, you have set up how you're going to interact with this new community. 
with this new audience, then uh, use WhatsApp effectively. This is step three. So here are some ways that you can use WhatsApp. So the first one is crowdsourcing information. So if you're working with communities that are, are very spread apart, so I know there's an example in India that uh, nonprofits in India are using WhatsApp because the, you know, it's such a huge piece of land. The roads are not the best. It's very hard to connect one way to the other. So you can send people um, a survey, for example, with a, just three questions or something like this. They can answer it on WhatsApp. They can send you a voice note. Also, if it's some, if it's people that, you know, have a hard time writing or don't have the time to write so much, they can send you a voice note. You can, you know, if, if there's an, something urgent and you need to have like a head count or something, then you can ask on WhatsApp and people can just send, you know, check if they are there, they receive the message. Um, so there's different ways and since WhatsApp, you can send like documents, you can send videos, you can send a lot of different things. So you can use it just to, you know, get a sense and crowdsource information from people. You can use it for community building too. So you can have groups on WhatsApp and you can have them with your volunteers, with the people from work and to use them if you are working in a, in a place that you need constant communication, but you're not physically in the same city or physically in the same office. It can be a good way you know, to, to do this. Then um, sharing updates. So there's another feature of WhatsApp that's broadcast. So you have a list of all the people that you want to share your message with. And every time something important happens, you can just broadcast to your entire list. So this is very useful. Um, also, if you want to share information that needs to be seen today, because if you share information on social media or an email, uh, probably people are not going to see it right now. Some people might, but not everyone. But on WhatsApp, you it's it's you are more guaranteed that people will see it now because people are using it a lot, as we saw before. And there's also stats on like how much time people spend on WhatsApp, and it's just very very high amounts. Um, so you can do it like that. So the broadcast, how the broadcast works is you make if the person that wants to do the broadcast, anyone can do a broadcast. You put a list. You make a list, it's a, there's an option there on WhatsApp and you make a list of all the people you want to include in the broadcast and then you just send, you just send the message. And every time you want to send a message to that same broadcast list, you can do it. And people can't, like, people can't respond to the broadcast, they can respond to you like one-on-one, -on -one, but this is just to get information out there. And in a group, then people can interact in the group or you can mute the group and then only one person can, can you know, uh, give updates and you can up, unmute the group at any time so people can talk, mute it again. You can do different things. Uh, so you can do it for organizing events, especially in places that, as I said, have low connectivity. Uh, you can communicate with donors. So if you have donors that um, are willing to communicate with you on WhatsApp or that they want more like direct contact with you, they want to have more information of the, the activities that you're doing, you can, for example, send, I don't know, pictures of real-time work that you're doing. You can tell them, oh, we're here uh, doing, you know, the work for the, like, what you donated for. Here are some pictures. And then use other communication channels to do, like, a more general survey or to have a more, like, formal approach to your communications. And a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So if you have a fundraiser, usually what it's done in WhatsApp is you have a link, uh, like, you have a link to to the place that you know you can donate money you can send it to your contacts and this works because uh, so in whatsapp you need to have the phone numbers of the person you're communicating with so if i send you a message then there we know um we know that there is um a relationship right like i have your number you have my number i'm communicating you communicating with you through WhatsApp, and um, and then you know you can you can send a link of what you need of the fundraiser you have and personalize each message, right? Like, hey, the name. This is for you. You know, I'm I'm in this um, fundraising. Would you like to donate? You can you know follow up. And and so I see a question here. So why is it different? So the difference is that uh, in many countries people don't text. So people use WhatsApp as texting. 
as their main communication is the main way they communicate with people. And it's an open conversation in WhatsApp. A text is more closed, like you send a text and, and that's it. In WhatsApp, the communication is always ongoing and you can start it at any moment. And here are some headlines of some news I found. So how WhatsApp is being used by nonprofits in India, how WhatsApp became the tool of choice for the World Health Organization during COVID-19. So the World Health Organization had a chat bot where people could uh, write uh, and they would get information about COVID in multiple languages. And this other one, I found that um, an NGO in Lebanon was doing WhatsApp surveys with Syrian refugees to see what had been their experience in the country because the refugees, most of them, 80% of them had a phone, but they didn't have a computer, they didn't have anything else. They had a phone, they had WhatsApp, so they could interact with the, with the people from the NGOs and answer the questions that they were you know, being asked immediately. So what's up in action? I have some, some examples here. I had to blur it out because it's a real life example of my situation. So as I said, when I was working across Latin America, especially in the, in the Amazon, um, oh, sorry, how can I go back? Okay, let me see if I can go back. Okay, so when I was working in, um, in the Amazon jungle, there is a lot of, um, there's not that good, like the connectivity is not so good. So when we were organizing events, we were organizing different types of events. So to engage communities to do a certain activity and, you know, like a workshop or, you know, gathering people from different regions. And since the internet was really bad, we had to plan basically our things on WhatsApp. So if you see in this screenshot, it was, you know, some person would like send the presentation, the other person would like write, okay, the next steps are this, this, and this. And then we would just coordinate everything on WhatsApp because there was literally no other way. So this is one, one quick example I wanted to share with you. And yeah, so step four, step four is give people a reason to get involved. So this is, this happens with all communication channels, but in WhatsApp, it's extremely important because WhatsApp is a two-way street. So it's not like uh, social media that you just send a message that you, you know, send um, or like send a newsletter, send an email or post something you are have a direct contact with the person you are communicating with them one on one so this gives you a lot of more options and a lot of more personalization for you to um, interact with people and of course this takes time so if you have the capacity it like you should you should use it but in, in a lot of situations where you need to have a more personal connection with the person you can use it so how do you give people a reason to get involved is to know what people want to share, what people want to hear, and to give them that person and give them a reason to keep coming back to you. So in this, in this uh, part, what I said before, sharing the local voices of the communities you work with, it's extremely important because WhatsApp is a way, it's a very, horizontal platform and there's no hierarchy right like anyone can send anything to anyone this of course has its pros and cons but it's different from social media or from emails because it's like one institution sending something to the others with you you kind of if you have an, a whatsapp account and you are contacting people you can you know give them more control over the information you can tell you know give them this control so they can share freely with their network in just one click and um, so this is, this is what I said. So share local voices and also get people to take offline action. So this is also really important because most of the times we don't want people just to stay right online and just to you know, have a chat with you on WhatsApp, but to drive change. So I'll give you an example of also a work I did so um, in one of the projects I was working on, we recorded podcasts with, with um, 
with uh, different communities that we were working with. So we interviewed them and we created a podcast. The goal of ours was to share the information as widely as possible. This, not, this was not a traditional podcast in which we wanted to like get rankings or something. It was just to get this communication across. And so what we did, we did like a little flyer on WhatsApp that had like the face of the person, the main highlights of the episode. And we send this to people with a little text and with the audio of the podcast. Sometimes it was short audios, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And sometimes they were really long audios. So they were like 40, 50 minutes. And uh, we, we told them specifically, this is a podcast about this topic. Please share it with everyone you know. This is free to use. And people were sharing it with everyone. We also had our contact information and the flyers, all this. And then this was really successful because it was a great way for people to, you know, take control of this information, to share it with whoever they wanted. And we were asking them something very clear. Why are they going to do it? Because it's a topic that is interesting for them. And they were, when, when they were interacting with us, if they asked us a question or, or if they had any doubts, we made sure to always keep the conversation going and to always, you know, uh, share the more valuable information of this topic. So you can also see when you have these types of conversations. So is, is people, uh, are people interested in maybe this type of topic more than this? And you can also use this as a way to know more about your audience. What are people asking more of? And that is something that you don't necessarily get with a newsletter, for example. Not a lot of people will answer back to a newsletter saying like, oh, okay, this was useful or helpful, or you don't know if we send it to someone else. So, um, but with WhatsApp, you do and you get more of this immediate feedback. So, okay, this, um, I have some questions here. Uh, I'm gonna answer some. So they're more like the technical one. So you, WhatsApp uses your phone number. So you need a phone number to use WhatsApp. Um, so not a lot of people can connect in the same WhatsApp. It's more personal, but there is a uh, WhatsApp for business. So it's another app, but it works exactly the same that WhatsApp has, and it's more institutional. So you can set up this WhatsApp for business. You can use WhatsApp on a desktop. You have to connect it with your phone, but you can use it on a desktop. And uh, with WhatsApp for business, you can, you can like program automated messages. So when you're not on, online, you can, you know, program it to send a message and um, and then get back to people when they come online or get them to, you know, whatever they need to do, you will like, you can even program all this. But um, yeah, you, you need a phone. Yeah, you definitely need a phone. So um, you need to have one. If it's like an institutional phone, then that would be the WhatsApp phone and you can have it on the computer always. And then multiple people can use it, but it has to be attached to one specific phone. Um, okay. Perfect. So let's continue. And then in the end, so yeah, the maximum person for group chat, I think is like 250. Um, yeah, 250. Okay, so step five, we have now how we're going to communicate, where people are communicating, how to communicate with them, how to use WhatsApp effectively. So define what you're going to use it for and use it in that way. Step four was give people a reason to interact with you. And step five is get creative. And this is my favorite, favorite step because um, it allow, WhatsApp allows for a lot of creativity. And so the first thing, first tip I would give you is to just be curious, to look how people are using it, how people in your communities are using WhatsApp, what they like to share, what they don't like to share. Um, combine it with other communication strategies. So I've mentioned a bit of this uh, while I've been talking. And this is, you know, this is not your sole communication strategy and it's not gonna replace what's existing, but it can give you communication strategy like a breath of fresh air if you have this other channel where you can interact with people in a different way. So it's not doing the same of what you're doing already in your social media or in your newsletters on your website, on other type of digital communication. It's more like, how can I combine it to either reach people that I'm not reaching with this other, um, you know, with this other 
um, platform and, and how do I get more of it? So for example, there are, I mean, this is an example that I've also faced is uh, right now I work with a lot of organizations in China, for example, and China doesn't have social media. So like, uh, well, not the social media that we use. So no, no Facebook, no uh, Twitter, they have their own version. So either my, my solution would be to create another account or to use some sort of messaging app that they are using and then I can get um, an account with. So in this case, it would be WeChat. I don't use WeChat and I don't know. Like I haven't started using it yet, yet but I'm in a, in a moment that I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is something I need to do if I want to connect with these people because these people are not on social media. They are on something else. So this is what's going to happen with what's up sometimes. It's like if you're, if you're trying to communicate with an audience that and they are not on your social media. So some people are receiving your content on social media or a newsletter, but some are not. So then where are they? If they are in WhatsApp, then this is a great addition to what you already have. Uh, the other thing is ask for feedback. So as I said, you can really have this two-way conversation on WhatsApp. You can share proof of your work and you can you know, just innovate in any way that you find that can be creative uh, if you can send PDFs, sometimes you can send a PDF or you can send an image and ask people to edit the image or ask people to I don't know, send an audio to you and then collect multiple audios from different people and make a big audio and then share it back with, with the people that collaborated with you. So there's just so many ways where you can you know, get creative and use WhatsApp in very different ways. And I have some, some examples here for you. So what's up, uh, the use of what's up during COVID-19. So first I have on the left, this it's just a funny meme. Uh, consumer is always super important. So, um, so yeah, government says work from home and all the fishermen in their house with their boats doing what? So these are the types of things that sometimes you see on WhatsApp. So you can break the ice with these types of memes. So sometimes it's more informal. You don't have to have this like, you know, very, very structured communication that you might have in other channels. It's, it's more informal. You can just, you know, play with humor a lot. Um, other examples here during COVID-19. So this is one example of, an, of another article that when people weren't able to meet face to face, they were using WhatsApp to organize and to then do specific actions, you know, like offline. So people were organizing to, um, to, to, know, to help people in their neighborhoods. So help elderly people that couldn't leave their house, people would organize on WhatsApp and then it's like, okay, I'm gonna you know, help uh, this person get their groceries today, stuff like this. So, um, so this is a way also to act um, another way that uh, WhatsApp was very useful during COVID-19 is sharing information about fundraising events. So this yellow one is in Spanish, it's one information that I got. I'm not in Colombia anymore. I'm, I live in Spain now. So this one, this is a type of information that I wouldn't get if I'm not you know, watching Colombian TV, if I'm not up to date with Colombian newspapers. And, and this is just you know, a way that you can send it really quick if you have a group that is interested in these things. You can send it and, and people can be connected with other realities from other parts of the world. So this is also really important. And another thing is like screenshots. They're very also common on WhatsApp. You can take a screenshot from an institutional channel. This was from the Ministry of Transport, the screenshot on the right, and, and, and share it with people in a very immediate way, right? So it's like, okay, I'm gonna screenshot this and share it. And that's why I mean with that, it can be a complementary thing also to what you're already, to the strategies that you're already having. Um, and okay, now we are almost done. It's perfect because we're gonna have time for questions. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So the step six is to review your progress. This is, this is really important because since WhatsApp is very fast paced, you have a lot of chats, you have a lot of communication then you have to kind of stop a bit and think like, okay, um, why, like, why is the audience using the WhatsApp? How are they using it? How can I do it better? So if you're using it to, I don't know, communicate with, with people that are, you know, in, in areas that are very spread out. 
So you can see at what's the frequency of the communications we're having, how many people, if it's a group that you really want to get people engaged, how many people in the group are actually participating, um, why are they participating or not, and are there opportunities for people to participate in these groups? How can, you know, I make it more interactive, for, not interactive, but like more comfortable, a comfortable environment for people to participate. And, um, and sometimes definitely not over communicate with people on WhatsApp because it is until now, there is there are ways that people like organizations are using it for more professional uh, purposes, but it's still a very like, um, like personal use, right? People use it to communicate with their families. And, um, and so don't, don't overshare, right? There's not, sometimes if you write like, if you send the messages or broadcast and you're sending them um, like 10 a day or 20 a day, maybe that's a bit too much, right? So you need to, that's a lot of like trial, trial and error and you need to play with that a lot. Um, so yes, that is one thing. The other thing that in like reviewing your progress when you use WhatsApp is to use all of the functionality. So I said, I mentioned already What's up for business? This is a, a great, great tool. And as soon as WhatsApp started, so it was like WhatsApp thought um, business, only businesses were going to use it. And then they quickly realized that nonprofits were using it, NGOs were using it, governmental agencies were using it, like international organizations, like the World Health Organization use it. So then they started also uh, tweaking these tools to get people, you know, to, to, broaden the reach of the types of organization that are using WhatsApp. And now um, WhatsApp is rolling out a payment feature in, um, in uh, Brazil. It started, it started only in Brazil. So you can um, pay on WhatsApp, you can transfer money to someone so that in a future can be a way to get like donations from people, especially in crisis situations, for example, you can use this as a very fast way to, to get donations. So these are just some, some of the examples of, um, of ways that you can, you know, review and see what's working and what's not working. So um, these are the steps. So to recap, so I have used WhatsApp to connect with people that are not tech savvy. So you don't need to be tech savvy to use WhatsApp. It's very, very easy to use. Everyone can use it. At, in any place, you know, like, like I said, it's in multiple languages. It's very intuitive. Uh, I've connected with people that are scattered geographically that don't have easy access to information. So that sometimes don't have TV, that like, don't have like, good internet. So this is a good way to fill in this gap that speak different languages. So, you know, you can use the same message translated in different languages to send it to different people. Uh, people that don't feel heard and that WhatsApp has provided a way for them to organize and share their voice and share what's important to them because this is the way that they communicate and is what they use the most and what they feel that will get them heard by a person faster. Because that's also one thing when you, when you communicate on WhatsApp, there's someone on the other end and you know that a person will answer this, right? At some point, you're going to be interacting with the person. In other ways, you don't really know who it is. Like what's up the fact that, you know, there's this person there, you kind of have a more a sense of connection and knowing that someone will help you solve your issues. And um, WhatsApp has helped the organizations that I work with provide better support for their, um, their volunteers, their workers, their communities, their donors, share their message with wider audiences increase trust in the project and in the organization and have a toy dialogue. So my last question for you is type act if you want to get these results, if you want to use WhatsApp or see one, some of these benefits with the organizations and the communities that you worked with. Okay, great. Yeah, I love seeing that a lot of you want to act on this. 
And um, this is a great, this is a great um, starting step for you all. Act more, yes, I love that. <laughs> okay, perfect. So that was, those were my six steps. Now you have all the steps you need to start innovating in your communications and supporting uh, new audiences. And now um, we can go to the Q&A. Before, I'll, well, you'll, you're gonna get a, con um, a copy of this presentation, but definitely let's connect. I wanna hear from you. You can find me on LinkedIn, Naira Bonilla, my name. You can write me to contact at nairabonilla.com or on my website, nairabonilla.com. Today it crashed, so don't go on it today. Um, it crashed earlier today and I didn't have time to fix it before the call, but definitely you can write to me, you can contact me, if you contact me on LinkedIn or by email and you want to talk on WhatsApp, I can give you my WhatsApp. <laughs> and, um, and I like to have this one-on-one -on -one uh, conversations with people, so really feel free to contact me and um, if you want to work together in any way, we can have a chat and uh, make it happen. So, um, okay, Stephen, over to you for the questions and- um... yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Naira. That was really, um, really fascinating. I, I really loved what you said in the beginning about the, the inclusive language. It seems like that, that could extend even beyond WhatsApp to, to any of your communications, right? Totally. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, we got some questions in here. If we haven't asked a, a question already, we probably got about almost 10 minutes, which is awesome. Um, for q and A, I'll, I'll start with my own, Ira. It kind of it struck me that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like if you already have a Facebook strategy, then a, a lot of that could kind of translate over to, to how you use WhatsApp. Is that, is that a fair statement? Maybe there's some differences, but what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You can use something. The idea is not to reinvent the wheel, right? I, mm -hmm. If you have something that is working on Facebook, but you're trying to communicate with people that are not on Facebook, you can use the same strategy you have and engage people in a similar way. Yeah. That makes sense. So Natalie here asked about maybe introducing it. So let's say you're a nonprofit, you're here in Indiana or wherever, you do all that you want to get going and follow your great advice. How would you let people know? Would you maybe put it in like email newsletters and maybe even Facebook posts like, hey, we're on WhatsApp now, you know, check us out here. Is that, a, is that a good way of doing it? Yeah, definitely. That would be a good way, letting people know that they can join a group. So you can um, have a link. Uh, you can like create a link on WhatsApp. It creates it, you know, you, you click like create a group and then share group link. And then this link, you send it to people. So you can tell them if you want to join our group, uh, click here. So if you want to join this group to get updates on this or like the specific, the specific purpose of the group, people click on the group and immediately they get added to the group. So nice. that is one way you can do it. Or another way is if you want people to text you, so tell them we are on WhatsApp on this number. If you have any questions or if you want to contact us for this, text us on this WhatsApp number and we will answer you in whatever time frame. Very cool. Um, there's a question in here I, I think is really uh, pretty interesting and important. Since it's a two-way communication, you're going to have group discussions, people are going to be chiming in. What about like kind of moderating the discussion, right? So maybe someone's being abusive or you know, saying wrong information or things like that. Any tips for kind of dealing with that? It seems like, you know, that's, that's just kind of maybe something that happens on every social, social network, but any specific tips for WhatsApp and, and mitigating that kind of thing? Yeah, that's a, that's a harder, that's a harder, yeah. <laughs> because the one thing that you can do, you can just uh, delete the person from the chat, okay. uh, from the group. And that's it. Like you have the power to just delete the person from the group and, um, and then, and then, you, you don't have to engage with that person anymore. But, uh, but yeah, it is, it is hard. You know, you have to be um, kind of like they're moderating. What you can do is if you have a group, you can sometimes mute the group. No one will be able to talk. And when you are there and you want to engage or ask a specific question, you unmute the group and then you start the conversation again. Okay. So not too dissimilar from Facebook once again. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad you said boot him. Like, just kick him out of there, right? It seems yeah. like some hand ringing over this sometime. I'm I'm pro just kicking him out. So <laughs> I love it. <Yeah. laughs> um, here's a cool one from Andrew. Um, 
older older folks, our, our seniors, we love them, but maybe sometimes not as tech savvy. Have have you seen that? I, I, you you showed kind of the the country breakdown, but is there demographic differences in using WhatsApp, or is it pretty universal? Um, there are differences I need to check, but WhatsApp okay. is definitely more equal in terms of like hmm. the social media platforms. So people of all ages use WhatsApp. Uh, so it's not specific to younger audiences. There are other social medias or messaging, you know, platforms that are used more by younger audiences, but WhatsApp is definitely used by people from all ages. So it's so, so easy to use if a person knows how to use, like it's easier than texting, I feel. Um, you know, sometimes with text, you don't know, it doesn't send. And, um, so yeah, it's very intuitive and it's used by people of all ages. Cool. Another Facebook similarity there. That's great. Um, yeah, I guess maybe something like TikTok or something like that would skew younger, huh? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Although, I don't know, you never know when people, it seems like those older generations, they are always migrating up and then something new gets invented and, and us, uh, you know, Gen Zs and Ys go, go somewhere else. Um, what about um, resistance to sharing the phone number? It seems like... Yeah. That is that even really an issue? Because if they have a WhatsApp account, it's connected to their phone number. Is the phone number kind of opaque or hidden, or would you have access to that as well? You have access. So okay. So then that's why you need to be very open with like who you are, and that's why you know the other person knows who you are, right? So it's not like this random person is texting me. So you know this person, and. Um, and like it happens, you know, you can see other people's phone numbers, but but it's sometimes, most of the times it's not an issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you know, everyone's on the same page, right? And um, and what you, like what you can do to get these numbers, like for people to get these numbers is when you're collecting any other type of information, you specifically, you know, you tell people if you want to, you know us to send you this type of information on whatsapp because you don't like your email you know you don't you're not on your email all the time you want to receive other types you know more up to date like now right i can send you something on whatsapp you will see it now so if you want to get like the the latest scoop then give us your number we'll add you to a group if what you can add people also to a broadcast and that way people won't see other people's numbers very so cool so then you can do that option too, but you will know that person's number and they will know your number, but they don't have to see other people's. Okay. That makes sense. And I love what you said about the transparency. That's, that's always key, right? Yeah, that makes sense. What about um, accessibility? Um, Jordan is here asking about, you know, do they have like screen reading or, um, you know, where it's uh, whatever appears in the text is is heard through the phone. Does it have those kinds of features? I'm not sure. Okay. Not sure. Well, yeah. Something to look into. I will type on that. Yeah, that's something to look into. Okay. I, I kind of believe it. it. At least they're they're wanting to do that. They already have it. It's such a big company. But yeah, that's that's it. We'll have to look into that, Jordana. Um, hopefully they do. Um, Another one, we got a couple minutes. So if you haven't asked a question, now's the time because I'm getting yeah. to the bottom of the list here. Um, who, who, who have you seen kind of runs it? Is it marketing? Is it fundraising? Is it like the ED? Who have you seen kind of be the owner? Is it the same as who would own any other social network or maybe email marketing? Yeah, I think it makes sense when it's someone that is managing the other social media because you can have like it can complement, right? And you can have a sense of what people are asking, what people, you know, but uh, also depends on, you know, your main goal for this, right? So if it's, if you're using it to, con to connect, contact with um, donors, maybe younger donors that are on WhatsApp or donors that maybe are in a group together because they know each other or something like this, then it would make sense that the person that, you know, is in contact with them uses it. So I've known that in the past, there are people that they use their personal WhatsApps, right, to talk with the donors because, or like the, the board of directors or things like this, because this is the way, you know, the person that is in charge of this, right, the donor manager. But also it depends and depends on how you're using it. And an organization, you know, there could be three people in the organization that use it, right? And then yeah. they can use it for, for different things, but like they're each using them on their own WhatsApp. It's not the same one. Hmm. That makes sense. 
or maybe there's different groups for each. That could be another way to segment it, right? Also, yeah, yeah one of different groups. That makes sense. Um, this is really cool. I just, I just love having you talk about this stuff. Um, speaking of groups, you mentioned there's like a 250 person limit to the group. Is there a limit to how many groups you can create? I believe not. Oh, wow, great. Okay. I believe, not. I believe you can create as many groups as you want. Okay, nice, very cool. Um, wow, this is, I'm gonna run out and download it. Um, in fact, a lot of the families at my son's school are using it, so I probably should have done that already, but um, yeah. this, is, this is really neat. And you know, while we got you um, in, in the final seconds here, you obviously have an, an amazing perspective. Is, is there anything else you're seeing that, that maybe us um, you know, North Americans should, should kind of keep our eye on as demographics are changing or shifting and then wanting to do more to, to engage with, with everyone in our community? Well, no, what I said already, like uh, WhatsApp really has um, like such a big reach and um, in the US it's not that common and people use iMessage a lot, for example. But when you leave the US and people don't have iPhones, which is one big barrier. Oh, interesting. And yeah, like it's not common at all. So for like, that's also an issue of activity for me. For example, when you know this app Clubhouse came out, it was only on iPhone, exclusive on iPhone and the rest of the world was completely locked out of this conversation that were happening. And I think Clubhouse didn't succeed a lot because, well, they limited their own audience, right? Yeah. They limited just who can use it. But then what's up, what I really like about it is that it's just anyone with any phone, it can be the oldest smartphone, <laughs> it will work. And I've tried it because I've lost my phone many times and I've had to use <laughs> smartphones that don't even call anymore, but they have WhatsApp. So that is something that, um, yeah, that I, I find so fascinating and so interesting and just how people are using it to organize at a local level or like at a grassroots level and just people of all ages like my dad uses it he lives in a tiny town he uses it to organize for everything like to protest to do things and it's just yeah it's, it's fascinating that's cool big opportunity here thanks for for enlightening us this is this is awesome to have you and we, you got your contact information on the screen do reach out folks um, yeah was, i know there was a lot of questions that weren't answered so feel free to reach out yeah definitely reach out connect with her and um like I said, you folks in the environmental uh, cause type, you might want to check her out as well. And Ira, this is awesome to have you. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was great. And thanks to all of you for hanging out. Um, always good to see a full room. I know we're getting close to a uh, year end fundraising time. So I, I appreciate all you folks joining in here. Um, like I said at the top, we did record it. So be on the lookout from me for an email from me uh, with the slides, with the recording. Um, and join us. Uh, we got a great webinar coming up next week. Speaking of year-end fundraising, Giving Tuesday, all that good stuff. We're going to be talking about it. Um, my buddy Jesse Lane uh, is going to talk about his four-step plan for uh, year-end donations. So check that out. we got lots of other good uh, topics coming up. we got capital campaigns, uh, all kinds of good stuff coming up on our webinar schedule, usually on Thursdays, usually in the afternoon. So check that out. Register even if you're not free, you'll get the recording by just being a registrant, like you'll get the recording of, of this session. So we will call it a day there. Like I said, be on the lookout for an email from me. Uh, Naira, open up that door and get some fresh air in there. Thanks for, for doing this in, in the hot closed room there. It was awesome to have you. And thanks to all of you for hanging out. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Uh, have a good weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye now. Yeah, thank you so much. See ya.